Hello everyone. Welcome back. In this video, we are going to explore Azure Site Recovery. So we can use the Azure Site Recovery for business continuity and disaster recovery purpose. So with that, uh, we can keep our business apps and workloads running even if there is any outages. Because uh, with the site recovery replication, we can, whether it is the physical or virtual machines, we can you know, replicate the data from the primary site to the secondary location. And uh, so during this failover, it will be transferred from the primary site to the secondary site. And uh, even once the primary site is back online, we can fail back to the primary site. Okay, so let's consider this architectural diagram. So during the replication process, so here uh, this is the source environment and uh, here is the target environment. So in the source environment, uh, we have the virtual machines and it's managed disk and uh, there will be a catch data this is the uh, storage account where the data will be cached and uh, from here it will be replicated to the target environment and uh, when we enable the replication for the azure vm the site recovery mobility service extension will be automatically installed on the vm and uh, this extension registers the vm with the azure site recovery and this storage account will be used for caching the data and uh, when we do the failover the data will be transferred over to the target location okay and uh, when we initiate the failover the vm will be created in the target location and uh, until the vm is up and running you will not be charged for the compute resources Okay, so now let us see the demo. So I have the script for creating the Azure Virtual Machine. So I'm going to create the VM in the North Europe location using this image and this is the VM size. And uh, then I'll be installing the IAS using the custom script extension and uh, then I'll enable the port for the same, which is port 80. So let me execute this command. So let me run this script to create the virtual machine and uh, it will install the IES and open the required ports. Okay, let's wait for this to be completed. So once the VM is ready, then we can proceed further. Okay, so now we can see that uh, the script has been completed. Okay, so now let me go to the virtual machine and open the VM. So here, let me take the public IP address. Since we have already allowed uh, in the NSG. So under the network settings. So here we can see we have allowed RDP and HTTP port 80. So now we are able to access the web server on this VM. Let me just quickly go to the IS and uh, edit the page. So let me open this in the notepad. Okay, so I have made this change. Let me take this public IP. Okay, not the Europe VM. Okay, now let me go to the VM under the disaster recovery. So under the backup and disaster recovery, click on the disaster recovery. So here we can select the target region. So currently my VM resides on North Europe. So I'm going to replicate this to the West Europe. So here you can see it on this graph. And uh, once we have selected, then you can click next for the advanced settings. 
So here for the target settings. So it will be created a new resource group. This is the RG-01 hyphen ASR. So this will be created on the target region, which is West Europe. And uh, there is going to be also this VNet created. And uh, next uh, here you can see the storage setting. So this is the cache storage. So I'm going to change the hard disk to standard HDD. And uh, here's the replication setting. As you can see here, it's going to create the site recovery vault in the West Europe. And uh, it will also create the automation account. So once we have selected this, we can just click on review and start replication. Okay, click on start replication. Okay, meanwhile, uh, let's go to the web server and uh, here let's make some changes. Okay, let me save this and uh, let me refresh it. Okay, so we have made some changes and uh, now we can see that uh, it's enabling replication for one VM. And also if you go to the resource group, here we can see the additional resource group which is created in the West Europe location. And if you go here, so here you can see that uh, there is a VNet created in the West Europe. So during the failover, it will be using this VNet to deploy the VM. And uh, here is the site recovery vault resource group. And uh, here we have the storage account. This is the cache data. So this will be in the source region, North Europe. So from here, the data will be transferred to the target region. So when we enable the replication first, the data will be stored on this cache storage account. And from here, it will be transferred over to the target region. Okay, so this will take around uh, 30 minutes. So let's uh, wait for this to be completed. Okay, so if we go to this, virtual machine and uh, disaster recovery. Okay, this is still replicating. So let me go to the resource group and uh, site recovery vault. And here under the protected items, click on replicated items. Okay, still we don't see the VM here. So let's wait for this replication to be completed so that uh, we can see some data here. Okay, now let me refresh again. Okay, so here now we can see this replication health is healthy and status enabling protection active location North Europe. So now if I go to this VM under the disaster recovery. Okay, so here now we can see the status. It's enabling the protection. So once this is completed, then we will see the failover and the test failover will be enabled. So until then, it will be disabled and uh, then it will start copying the data to the cache storage account. And once that is completed, then we can see that failover and the test failover will be enabled. And after that, uh, we can test the replication. Okay, so enable replication, it's still in progress. Okay, let's wait for this to be completed. Okay, now you can see the status. 
initial replication is in progress so it will take some time to complete the uh, copying data to the cache storage account so once that is completed then we will go ahead with the test failover okay so now the replication is enabled and uh, currently it's uh, synchronizing the data to the storage account okay so now it's waiting for the first recovery point creation okay so now we can see that uh, failover and uh, test failover option is enabled okay so the difference between failover and test failover is when we initiate the test failover it's going to be create a vm in the target region but it's not going to affect the existing vm that is running but when we do the actual failover we have to stop the actual one that is running in the north europe so that it will be completely failed over to the target region and once we have the source region back online then we can again revert back to the primary region okay now let's go ahead and initiate the test failover so here let's select the source and the destination which is there north europe and the west europe so recovery point i'm going to select the latest which is the lowest rpo and the azure virtual network so this is the one that was already created and then you can click on test failover okay so now if i go to the virtual machine i can see the uh, test vm which is in the west europe location and it is running so it doesn't have any public ip so let me go ahead and uh, assign the public ip address so go to the network settings and go to the interface and uh, click on the ip configurations and uh, go to the ip config so here we can associate the public ip address so that uh, we can test the functionality so it has to be the ip in the west europe location because we cannot assign the ip in a different region okay deployment succeeded updating network interface okay we also have to create the network security group we can see there is no network security group so let me add a network security group and then we have to allow the port 80 to access the web page okay so we got the public ip address let me try to access it now it won't work because we need to allow it in the network security group okay so let me allow the inbound port rule http port ag okay now let me refresh again okay now we can see that uh, the web page is serving from the west europe vm which is the test vm that is working successfully okay now we are going to clean up the test failover so that it will remove the resources that was created okay so this is now fine and uh, you can see that uh, the vm has been deleted automatically after we do the cleanup of test failover and uh, when we do the actual failover we have to shut down the existing uh, vm so that it will be completely 
cut over to the new one. Okay, as you can see here, shut down the machine before beginning the failover. And once we have the uh, primary location back online, we can again revert back to the primary location from the secondary location. Okay, so that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.